Hello, greetings, and welcome to Reanimate Your Body. Welcome to Reanimate Your Body. We are addressing your physical body, and we are addressing the way that your physical body interacts with your soul. Now, the reason that is such a vital thing is because, strangely enough, we have all incarnated on the physical plane. So the exercises that we are going to be doing this evening are designed to bring us into conscious spiritual contact with our body systems. Now, this naturally is going to help us with physical well-being, but it's also going to help us with spiritual matters. Now, the reason I'm going to be talking about spiritual matters in a class that seems to be addressed with being in the physical body, the reason is because your physical body is on the physical octave of reality. That means that in order for you to be focused in your mind, in order for your emotions to be stable, in order for your spirit to be happy, in order for your spirit to be at peace, you need to be here in alignment with the physical plane. Now, the easiest and quickest way for you to be in sync, in alignment with your physical body on the earth plane is to be conscious of it. Now, saying that it's important to be conscious of something that seems to be so obvious is going to seem like a somewhat silly suggestion at first. Some people would respond, well, you think I don't know that I have a body? Yes, of course, we all know that we have a body, but we have body systems such as the circulatory system with the blood. What does that feel like? We have the bones. What is the consciousness of bones? We have muscles and nerves. What are they doing? Now, one of the things that we are going to discover when we bring our spirit, when we bring our consciousness into our body systems, is that there is an interaction, a living interaction between the subtle energy of the mind and the soul and the tangible energy of the physical body. Now, to start the evening, we're going to do a quick clearing exercise. This is something that you can do anywhere at any time, but it's super important for what we're going to be doing this evening because we want the way to be clear so that we can feel our spirit and feel our physical body. So, first thing, check out the vibe where you are. And if you're not familiar with that, just pretend that you're psychic. Pretend that you can sense, is there any heavy energy where you are right now? If so, imagine that you are lifting the heavy energy out of your space. Lift the heavy energy out of your space, release it into light, or release it into the center of the earth as you choose. So lift, let it go, let it dissolve, Good. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to clear are fears. And what I'm doing right now, I'm just looking at the group aura. And it's evident that one of the things that a number of us have brought to this hour is subconscious feeling in the body that says, oh, attention is being brought to the body. But I don't want attention brought to the body. So what I want everybody to do is tune into your body and just say, body, you are okay. You are loved. Body, you are okay. You are loved. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, that is getting brighter. Now, the next thing we're going to clear, this is an interesting one. There are a number of clouds showing up in front of people's third eye. Third eye is, uh, you could think of it as between your eyebrows or maybe at the center of the forehead. Let's see why there's cloudiness around that. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is deep subconscious programming, but if we can get this cleaned up at this early stage, that would be great. There's something that people have. It's almost like those flaps that horses have to keep them 
when their workhorse is from looking to the side, but this is in front of the third eye, and it's because you're not supposed to look at the body, or in a sense, you're not supposed to know about it. This is maybe in childhood, you were told you know, body was dirty or something like that. Take one of your hands, imagine that you are pulling those delusions out of your third eye. Just pretend. This is something you can do via pretending. You're reaching with your hand, you're pulling the blocks right out of your third eye, it's sort of like pulling strings of goop out of your forehead, strings of gunky old energy out of your forehead. And as you pull it out, just repeat the words, my body's beautiful and divine. My body is beautiful and divine. Mm-hmm. That looks good. Now we are ready to explore reanimating the body. Okay. Now let's see which body system we're going to start with. I'm just looking at the energy and the tissue and the skin. Okay. Good place to start because that's your boundary. It's your physical boundary. What you're going to do, tune into your consciousness and get a sense that your consciousness is the part of you that's able to think, but it's also the part of you that feels, and your consciousness is also the part of you that knows deeper intuition and knowingness. So within you, just get a sense of the part of you that's thinking, the part of you that's hearing me speak. It's thinking whatever it's thinking and feeling whatever it's feeling. Now extend that feeling into your body and extend it to the tissue and the skin. And just imagine that you're pouring that awareness into the body. That's good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. Now, get a sense that you have a right to pour your awareness in. And this is the main thing coming up in a number of people it's almost as if they're starting to pour their awareness into their body and they're meeting the guard at the gate who says, who goes there? Now, that kind of thing can happen when you haven't been in certain areas or certain levels of your physical body. So, as you pour your awareness into your skin and into the tissue, just notice the texture there and just repeat the words, I am supposed to be here. I am supposed to be here. This is my body. I am supposed to be here. Ah, very nice. That is clearing some blockage. Everybody's brightening up. We are getting more synchronized presence. Synchronized presence between the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. Question I have for you. Just ask, what is the texture of the skin? Now, I'm not talking about the texture of your skin as in, do you use coconut oil? or It's not that kind of surface texture. One of the best ways to experience, let's say, the difference between the nerves and the bones and the skin, they all have a different texture of sensation or awareness. And it's okay when you first experience this if it seems as if you're making it up. But feel into the tissue at the skin and just under the skin. Pour your awareness into that gently but decisively. And just notice what's the vibe? What is the texture? What is that like? Mm-hmm. Ah, that's brightening everybody up. That's working. Okay. Really interesting shift. I'm noticing everybody's getting brighter, but just because you brought your awareness into your body more decisively, that process is actually pushing a lot of stagnant energy right out of you. So just lift the stagnant energy in your workspace. And your workspace, by the way, refers to your body, your aura, and the room that you are in. That's your workspace or healing space, if you like. Lift the stagnant energy right out of that space. 
lift the stagnant energy right out. Let it dissolve. That's good. Mm, many layers of stagnant energy. Just keep lifting and dissolving. This is one of the elements of healing and transformation. Anytime something is transforming, it's often releasing the energies, the old patterns that no longer need to be there. So, lift and release. Ah, much, much better. Now, once more, before we tune in and compare notes about what we experienced, so you're feeling into the tissue, especially at the skin, and you're getting a sense, what's the basic texture? What's the experience like? And if anybody wants to make a comment or question about what they experienced... Joel, I felt a little nauseous. What does that mean? Let's scan and see. This is happening to a number of people on uh, various subtle levels. Uh, The situation there is that you are feeling into the tissue of the solar plexus and the whole digestive system, and it's almost as if that system has divided itself off from the mind and from the spirit just so that you could deal with the daily whatever. And so this is to be considered as a healing opportunity for you to be a, a better friend to your tummy, basically, and begin to melt your consciousness into that middle area. Just pour your consciousness right in and almost as if you're joining the party there instead of making it some divided area. I noticed since we're working on the skin, I was wondering what I can do for the part of the skin that I might not be happy about, say, because of the aging or something, <laughs> or scar. Okay. Or... okay, that's a very deep question. We're going to answer it in a couple of ways. Part of dealing with body image is very much connected to what we're doing this evening, even though this is not officially a body image class. But let's put it this way. When you practice reanimating your body and you're going into a body system, you're experiencing the system as a texture of presence or a texture of energy. And that's what I was really hoping that you would get to when you were doing the exercise. And the reason that's so profound and the reason that helps your body image is that body image is not a felt sense. It is not something that you feel. It's entirely in the mind. It's almost as if the mind divides itself off from the pure experience of being in the physical body. So what I'd want you to practice doing on a daily basis is reanimating your body by bringing your consciousness into your physical body systems. Because when you do that, you'll experience that you are an energy being. And the idea of comparing yourself to this person or that person, that will start to seem strange. It'll be strange that at one time you were comparing yourself in that way. Very interesting. I want to share that in a, I'm traveling uh, and I was on Santa Monica Boulevard and doing the exercise in movement was pretty an experience. <laughs> it's very powerful. I mean, it's been very powerful. And, uh, and you know, the environment and, and connection and a connection to the body, it was really powerful. I just want to share that. When I sensed my skin, it seemed slick, kind of slippery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then underneath the skin, uh, it was dark, a little bit dark and cool and calm. That is fascinating. One of the things that's going to happen, when you go into a level of self that you've not experienced consciously before, it will sometimes appear to be dark or shadowed, which doesn't mean that it's hidden on any permanent basis. It only means that you've not been there. And so one of the curious and fun things that happens When you step into these parts of yourself where the light of your presence has not been before, they actually start to feel lighter in weight, and they can look lighter as if they're radiating more light. So that would be something to explore. And we're going to move forward now with some more body systems so we can have some more experiences with reanimating our body. Let's tune in. 
I want you to have this experience because once you have it, you won't need to take any recreational drugs anymore. What we're going to do is step into the blood. And the reason blood is so important is because blood carries our life energy and blood is liquid. Now, one of the things that people try and escape is the heaviness or solidity of the physical plane. And so they try and do that with artificial means that have side effects that are not good for them. So what I want you to do right now, tune into your circulatory system, which means you are tuning into the system that circulates the blood, and the blood is the liquid that is your life energy. So you are going to bring your consciousness into your blood now, just play with this next visualization. Just pretend as best as you can. You are going to bring the light of your soul and you're going to inject it into your liquid bloodstream. Bring the light of your soul, just pretend that you can do this, into your flowing blood in your body. Here's one way to imagine it. You're shining a flashlight from your soul and you could imagine your soul as this divine light that lives within you, or you could imagine it as a beautiful, embracing light that is all around you. That's your soul, your essence. You're going to inject it right into your blood. Okay. Yeah, for a few people it's easy. For a number of people, we're getting this instant, it's almost like a guard at the gate or a negative message that says, I am sorry, I am programmed not to allow this. So, okay, here's how we address that. Tune into the light of your soul and imagine that the light of the soul is in charge. The soul is in charge. And so address your body and say to the body, body, the soul is in charge here. Body, the soul is in charge here. Mm-hmm. That's good. Very nice. Okay. Now, let's try different techniques. Sometimes it works better if you do it really, really gently. Bring the light of your soul into your bloodstream so exquisitely gently. It's as if you were holding a baby. Very gentle. Very soft and smooth. Okay. That is working for a number of people. Ah, now the next technique is, as you might have guessed, imagine that the light of the soul is really strong and it's deliberately melting right into the cells of the bloodstream. It's strongly shining light right into the cells of the bloodstream. I'm sensing that even for those who prefer the gentle approach, the reason you also want to know the stronger, more decisive approach, I'm sensing that when there is toxicity, you want to be able to use a decisive, strong approach where the power and the vitality of the soul strongly melts its way in and strongly shines a light into the cells of the blood. Mm-hmm. We're still getting some subconscious back talk that says, well, this experiment is interesting, but we are not really allowed to do this. So we're going to address that. Talk to your body and say, this is the soul speaking. I am allowed to do this. This is the soul speaking. I am allowed to do this. Mm-hmm. That works. It is, of course, bringing up a lot of heavy energy that's releasing right out of your physical body. Here's what we shall do. It's into the healing space all around you. Lift the heavy stuff right out of the room. Just lift it out and put it in light or put it in the center of the earth. Let the heavy stuff that is no longer needed dissolve. Just let it go. Good. You are doing well. Okay, the next issue coming up, there are some concerns that are showing up in subconscious level of body. The body is feeling the vital energy from the soul, and there's a fear coming up 
I feel alive. Am I allowed to be this alive? Am I permitted to be this vital, this alive? The affirmation is, I am supposed to be alive. I am supposed to be alive. The universe wants me to be vital. The universe wants me to be vital. The universe wants me to be vital and alive. Mm hmm. That worked. Everybody lit up. Huh. I want to hear from you about how you're doing with bringing your soul into your bloodstream. Hi, I feel very warm. Very warm, okay. I wanted to find out how we can work with the injury, something about that nature of tissues oh. and skin. How to work with injuries regarding skin and tissue. Absolutely. We are going to speak about this, and in fact, we are all going to do a little exercise, visualization. So just pretend along with this. If there is a part of your body, whether it's the surface of the body or anywhere in the body, part of the body that needs some healing, needs some wellness, be aware of that part of the body. As you become aware of it, sense that that part of the body is a matrix of energy. Now, if you're wondering what a matrix of energy is, a matrix is simply a network. So imagine that it's made of fibers of light, an infinite number of fibers of light, and those fibers of light are connected together and they're connected to the rest of your body. And those fibers of light are also connected to your aura and to the universe and to your soul. We are going to use the light of the soul to inject light into that area of the body. It's kind of like jump-starting a car with a spark. So tune into your soul. And get a sense that your soul is an eternal spark of energy. The soul as eternal spark of energy. And extend some of that eternal spark in your soul to that part of the body. And let the soul energy start to sparkle like an electrical spark. And let it start to move into that area that needs the healing and wellness. And communicate with that part of the body and tell it that it is allowed to enliven itself. It's allowed to come back to life in a normal, healthy way. And get a sense that as you send that soul spark into that part of the body, it's waking that part of the body up so that it can feel connected to the rest of the body, to all the adjacent areas of the body near that zone. And it can be aware that it's part of a system, part of a, an aura. And you can sense the light of your aura starting to flow to and fro with that area where the, that part of the body is. And then the universe itself, the entire network of the universe is now on good terms with that one part of the body. And so you can flow that energy. Now, do we have any other comments or questions about bringing your soul into the bloodstream? It helped a lot when you said uh, fibers of light. Because just before that, I, I felt like I was there was this big flashlight skimming over my blood, but I wasn't with it, just kind of on top of it. And when you said fibers of light, then everything just kind of moved out my blood yeah it could be that fibers of light is so refined that it's just really easy to work with but also if you think about it what we think of as the physical body is really made from something that's not physical at all it's made from consciousness and it's made from atoms that themselves are not really physical and so our willingness to bring ourselves into our body we are really stepping into a paradox the paradox is they were stepping into something that's fundamentally just consciousness, but it's in a spectrum that seems to be physical. On the physical plane, it seems to be physical and real. I just had a comment about how it felt with the blood lighting up. Well, for me, the skin yeah. was pretty easy. The skin was also very light and tingly all over. 
Yeah. When we did the blood, I started at the heart, and I just imagined my heart pumping, and I felt a rush of light and heat go up my face, and as I imagined it going down my arms and legs, and I imagined it going into the capillaries, I felt light and heat going everywhere, and the yeah. only thing that was odd is I do have some struggles with kidney, and that was the one place in my body that didn't seem to light up quite so brightly. It uh-huh. was like, oh. I could get every side I've been playing with trying to let the, when we did the gentle, let's be gentle with the soul energy lighting up the blood, my kid yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're talking about different techniques is because for different people, different techniques work. But if you think you found something that works, I really invite you to try the whole range of techniques. The reason for that, maybe today a given technique works, but tomorrow you will have a different issue or you might be helping somebody who has a different texture of energy than you do. So you really want to know as many ways of transforming as you can possibly learn. Now, let us proceed, and let's see what else we can do here. (laughs) That's interesting. I was checking into the skeletal system, and I keep on getting a no on that, like don't go there. And then I'm asking on a deeper level, hey, what's that about? And it's almost as if there's some kind of a fear. So that makes me want to approach that and say, wait a minute, why is there a group agreement that the skeletal system is an issue? And possibly it's because when people look at depictions of the skeleton, it's in connection with poison, you know, the skull and crossbones on poison. It's also in connection with death. And so something in the subconscious that we really want to clear tonight is that there's an unfortunate link between the skeletal system and being dead. And nothing could be further from the truth, as you will find out in a moment or so. So let's see what we can do to bring our consciousness into the skeleton. We have to clear a couple of blockages in the thought process. First of all, there are some blockage energies that are saying, nope, do not go into the skeleton. It's almost as if, oh, I see what it is. This is, you might call it a case of new age-ism. This is a belief that the bones are so stable and they are so physical that if you were to integrate the soul with the bones, you would somehow not be able to get back to spirit. You would get stuck on the physical plane and you wouldn't be able to get back. That's absolute nonsense. The reason I say that, the more deeply you bring spirit into the body, Spirit is naturally transforming. It uplifts and transforms physical body. So to be avoiding the physical body so that you can be spiritual makes zero common sense. So let's do some affirmations. My body is divine. My bones are divine. My body is divine. My bones are divine. Mm Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. I am allowed to bring my spirit into my skeleton. I am allowed to bring my spirit into my skeleton. That worked. Okay. So we've got more alignment, more agreement, more presence. Good. Now, tune into your bones. And remember, the bones in the body are alive. If there's any other false belief to clear out. It's the idea that bones are somehow dead. Absolutely not true. Living bones are a form of tissue. You could think of them as being a more stable kind of tissue, okay? So bones are stable tissue. Bones are alive. Bones have blood. They have life. They're even flexible to a certain extent. So find out what texture of soul wants to flow through the bones. Is it strong and decisive? For some people, that will be the case. Or maybe the texture of soul energy that you want to flow into your skeletal system is delicate. Maybe it's slow. Maybe it's faster. You want to try these different things. Not all of them will work easily for you. But you want to know what it's like when you bring energy in quickly. You want to know what it's like when you bring energy in slowly. Mm -hmm. Good. A number of approaches are working. 
ah, good. What I like, as I tune into the energy field, there's more soft, warm presence in the bones now. What I'm liking about this is that it makes your body look safer and more at ease, more at peace on the earth plane. Mm Mm-hmm. Good. I'm also sensing some confusion in the rational mind. And there's something in the rational mind that says, well, I must not be doing this right because everybody knows that bones are heavy and solid, and yet this feels really light and comfortable. In fact, it doesn't feel like the skeletal system at all. It feels more like tissue, to which I would respond, well, yes, exactly, because bones are alive. Bones are considered perhaps as a stable form of tissue. So what did you expect? But to be fair to the mind, the mind is filled with ideas, and some of these ideas are symbolic but not really connected to reality. So by getting into the body, by reanimating the body, we're actually getting into reality. And we are letting our spirit manifest itself very deeply and profoundly on the physical plane. Now, here's a little experiment. You have brought your spirit into the body. You have brought your spirit into the skeleton somewhat. Now begin to intentionally massage inside the skeleton with your spiritual energy. And just pretend, just make up that you can do this because that's how you do metaphysics. It's all made up. That doesn't mean it's not real. Metaphysics is very, very real. It's the underlying reality of the universe. But the rational mind has other understandings. So just pretend that you can flow the light of your spirit through your skeletal system. Flow the light of your spirit through the skeletal system. Mm Mm-hmm. That's good. And find different places, different places in your skeletal system, and flow the energy back and forth, and you're really flowing your presence or your consciousness, your soul energy. And maybe you want your soul energy to feel cool and comfortable. Maybe you want it to be warm. Maybe you want it to be, in some cases, you want to use sizzling hot energy. Your intuition will tell you what you want to use. At other times, soothing and cooling. And all these ways of working with energy are all valid. Any way of working with energy is valid if it's appropriate and if it produces results and if it seems to be in alignment. Mm. What you're doing now is having a really deep cleansing effect. There's a stagnant energy that's releasing off of people. So release stagnant energy releasing right out of your healing space. Just let it go. And realize what a powerful metaphor it is when you lift energy out of your space. What you're saying, basically, is if you're doing a living affirmation where you're saying something that I identified with, I no longer identify with. So this stagnant energy, it's been in your space, maybe for eons, you no longer identify with it. So you lift it out and you let it go. Yeah. That is nice because it makes everybody's aura look significantly bigger and it makes everybody look taller. The chakras, the energy centers above your head are lighting up and the chakras below your feet are lighting up. That looks really good. Okay, a couple of affirmations are coming up that apply. Just tune into your body, tune into your skeleton and say, I am allowed to feel good. I am allowed to feel good. Here's another interesting one showing up. I am allowed to show up in this lifetime. I am allowed to show up in this lifetime. Mm Mm-hmm. That works. That's good. Okay. Very nice. Now, if you have a question or a comment about what just happened, if you brought your spirit into your bones, ah, so 
So you're wanting to coordinate muscles and bones working in harmonious ways. I'm going to address that with a little exercise that we are going to do for the next minute. Tune into your body and tune into the core of your body. What I'm sensing with coordination issues is that it has to do with not being in the core of the body. Now, another way to say core of body is spine. So bring your consciousness into your spine and melt the living energy of your soul into your spine. So you melt your soul energy into your spine. Yes, take a few moments to do that. Next, I sense that for coordination, we need to have a connection between the limbs, the legs and the arms, and the core of the body. So use your intention in your soul. Imagine a melting liquid light that connects from your spine to your arms and to your legs. What's really interesting with most of the people present, I'm sensing that even for those of you who perhaps do yoga or sports and you would think that you would be all connected, I'm seeing that there are definitely some disconnections. So something so basic as this, having that soul connection between the core of your body and your limbs seems to be helping everybody. And it's almost as if something happened on the earth plane, possibly when you were born, and it threw people into a fragmented state. So this is good to know. So it looks as if it'll be possible for you to improve your coordination and to also improve your ease of being in a body on this physical planet just by bringing your liquid light of your soul into the core and connecting that core with the limbs. Other questions that people might have? I have a couple of injuries. One is my knee, but I'm not feeling anything there, but in from my uh, the middle of my back straight up to my neck where I have serious injuries, it's, there's a lot of something going on. What you have happening is something that, in a certain way, everybody has happening to a certain extent for various issues. What's happening with this particular situation and in general with many people, it's like having layer upon layer of very strict rules. And these rules are, don't feel this, don't go here. And it's almost like having a room in the house and there's something in there that you need to clean up in order for whatever's there to be healthy, but you're not able to get in because there's a sign on the door that says, you don't want to go in this room. It's unpleasant. It's scary. Don't go there. So the technique that we're all going to practice for ourselves is... Bring the light of the soul into that part of the body and establish that you are allowed to be there and actually talk to that part of the body and speak in a kind but firm voice and say, this is the soul. I am allowed to be in this part of the body. This is the soul. I am allowed to be in this part of the body. and listen to whatever the upset voices trapped in the body are saying and say to them, thank you for sharing. You can release that stale energy now. Thank you for sharing. You can release that stale energy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. And we have a number of other questions, please. I was told that I'm starting to create osteoporosis, and mm -hmm. does this massaging with the light, would that help strengthen my bones, or is there some other recommendation you could make? Okay. We are going to do something, a little exercise we're all going to do, and it's going to address this specific question, and it's something that with a bit of creativity you can use to apply to any skeletal or even other body situation. It's almost as if everything in the skeleton starts to look compartmentalized. So that tells us that one of the main issues here is that things are not connected, which is never a good sign because health is integration between body and itself, between all the body systems, and it also has to do with connection between body and mind. And on a bigger level, 
body, mind, spirit, universe. So what you're going to do, I ask everybody now, bring your consciousness into the skeleton and have the intention that you are weaving everything together. In other words, the bones of the arms are going to connect with the shoulders, will connect with the rib cage, etc. So all the parts of the skeleton are all in communication with each other. Now, the energy that's flowing that allows the communication to happen is the spirit, which is you. It's spirit or consciousness. It's the eternal divine part of you. Now, anytime one part of the body seems compartmentalized, use your intention to bring your spiritual essence into that area so that you can melt the compartmentalized energies, okay? You melt the compartmentalized energies so that they are softer and so they are alive and relaxed, almost as if they're breathing. And so they start to breathe together as one. So you have this intention. You have the intention that you create unity and oneness as if all breathing as one for all the different parts of the body. Any other questions or comments, please? I'm finding this incredibly enlivening and clarifying. I'm astounded at how much stuff came out of my third eye and infusing the blood and my bones with soul energy was almost effervescent in both the feeling as well as in the things that it got out and got rid of. I'm finding the pains that I was having in a knee and leg issue that I've had and just structurally have really kind of evaporated. It's really amazing. I can see why you said, Joel, that we won't need any kind of recreational drugs. Yes, and of course, the statement was intended to be silly, but at the same time, I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's a very serious statement. So yes, Mm -hmm. indeed. Yeah. It's really, it's, and these are just wonderful techniques. Well, do enjoy. Thank you. I just noticed that when you asked, talked about the soul being connected, you know, put your Mm -hmm. soul in your body, I noticed it was kind of like electric currents coming from my soul and then, and then all, and then they kind of quickly formed, came together and formed a spiral, kind of like a DNA strand. And then I noticed toward the end, it kind of came back to that again. It makes total sense because you look at DNA, it is in that spiral. So probably just tuning into it right now, there's something that happens on the earth plane when light, which is not in any particular shape at all, it's just everywhere, that eternal light steps through the veil, whatever that is, that separates the all from this world. And then it starts to enter into certain shapes. And so I can see it right now. Soul enters in to this world and it starts tuning into and expressing as spirals. And so we have one more, please. In the past, I've had a lot of problems falling asleep. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's do a reanimate the body technique to address that. This is something that we can all practice. And since our intention at this moment is to feel cozy and mellow, but not asleep. Just keep that in mind. We have at least three issues that seem to affect everybody regarding this particular topic. Okay, the first one is fragmentation. It causes body energy to coalesce in different parts of the body, and they aren't able to communicate with each other, and they're not able to release. Hmm, so we'll do this in stages. Okay, this is the cozy technique or the sleep technique, if you like. Tune into your body from your head to your toes and tune into your soul. Now, as one person noted, soul can be very electric, but for this purpose, we are going to tune into the aspect of soul that is very slow and warm and liquidy slow and warm and liquidy expression of soul. So tune into that slow, liquid, comfortably warm. Let that gently but decisively pour into the body and 
let it connect the different parts of the body. I sense that in many cases, these disconnected parts of the body are all running at their own separate frequency, and it creates a lot of uh, crosstalk, you might call it. It creates a kind of a crosstalk that makes a nervous energy. So you are going to connect all the different parts of the body. You are going to use a slow, warm, liquidy energy. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, the next thing I see is that between the core and the extremities, there's something that's out of whack. So you are going to use a warm, slow, liquidy energy to connect the extremities, meaning top of your head, um, fingers and toes, connect those parts of the body with the spinal column. Slow, liquid energy connecting extremities with spinal column. And get a sense that nervous energy is melting into the spine and then draining out of the feet. So nervous energy anywhere in the body melts into the spine and then drains out of the feet. Hmm, that's nice. Already everybody's aura is quieter. Everybody looks more present in their body. That's good. Now, that last part about releasing from the feet, super important when you want to feel good, especially when you want to be relaxed, because it's almost like having a tub of water, and if the drain's not working, you're going to have a dirty tub of water. You want to be able to release whatever needs to release. So use whatever visualization works for you. You could imagine, just as you have in the bathtub, imagine that you open up the drain underneath your feet, or you could imagine opening a window under your feet or a door, you could imagine a column of energy that connects from the soles of the feet down into the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Very nice. Now, moving right along, let us see. Oh, I wanted to work with the nervous system. This is something that when you're able to consciously work with the nervous system, you will actually be addressing many of the issues that we think think are mental, the issues that we imagine are mental. Now, the reason I say that is that even though mind is not quite the same thing as brain, it's closely linked because the computer system that we know as the brain is really a liquid crystal computer system, and it is what our mind, which is the cosmic part of our thinking, our cosmic mind uses that computer system on the earth plane. Now, there is a strong link in the physical body between the nervous system of the body and the brain. So the brain and the nerves are very much united as one system. What that means is people tend to store nervous energy, as you might expect, in the nerves. So we are going to sweep the nerves of the body with soul energy sweep the nerves of the body with soul energy, okay? So tune into your soul. Now, really tune into the aspect of soul that is timeless, and there's a reason for that. For this particular exercise, tune into the timeless element in your soul. Now, bring that timeless vibration from your soul and start to flow it gently but decisively through the nervous system as if massaging the nerves with timeless energy. Another way to say timeless is eternal, the eternal energy. Another way is divine or universal, the divine or universal aspect. Let that part of your soul Sweep gently but decisively through your nerves. Now, one thing you might have happen, one thing you might notice is there are certain places where the energy has been so trapped in certain parts of the body that it's pent up in the nerves, almost like a pressure cooker. So when you gently flow 
the living energy of your soul, it is going to melt perhaps a layer of trapped energy in the nervous system. But you're still going to feel something that feels somewhat nervous because there could be a hundred layers there. But there's no time to start working on this like the present. And so this is the moment when you're starting to work on that. And so start to release the layers. Now, one thing to be aware of, just as a general rule that will make this easier to do, never judge what you do. So if you clear some layers around your nerves and you feel a bit of relief, but you feel that there are still a lot of tension layers present, do not judge yourself. Do not judge your nervous system. Do not judge your mind. So just play with this layer by layer. You're flowing through the nerves. You're flowing timeless energy, loving, cosmic, timeless energy from your soul. If you're wondering, by the way, many healing systems work with universal energy, and those are perfectly legitimate systems. I have a particular preoccupation with wanting you to do this with your soul energy because there is a tendency in New Age trainings that I notice to give power away. I do not want you to give power away. Yes, it's perfectly fine to use universal energy, but my goal for you is to know that you yourself are a perfectly legitimate expression of the universe. You are an expression of the universe. So when we talk about your soul, that is not less than universal energy. You are a real being. You are a true divine spirit. That is you. So when that energy flows from your soul, it's equal to the energy of source, the energy of God, the energy of cosmos. It's not better and it's not worse. It's part of that whole system. You are allowed to do that. So if you have any comments or questions about what you just experienced, or if you're just blissed out, just wave your aura. Okay. We're all in bliss out. Just want to explore a few more things. I want you to be able to tune into your physical body, and I want you to be able to release energies that you've picked up from the mass consciousness. Now, just to speak for a minute about what is mass consciousness. Mass consciousness is the combined energy of everybody on the planet, maybe even everybody in the universe. But since we're in a physical body on this planet, it's mostly referencing the group energy of this planet. The group energy of this planet is a very strong presence, but you don't need that presence, for the most part, in your space. So just get a sense that with the presence of will that your soul has, you can decisively push the presence of the group mind out of your body. With your presence of will, the light and truth in your soul, the light and truth in your soul pushes energies and patterns from the group mind right out of your body, right out of your aura. The truth of your aura, the truth of your soul pushes anything that doesn't belong there, anything from group mind out of your space. It's lifting some really heavy old patterns out of everybody. Just imagine this. Lift the heavy energies out of your healing space. Even if you don't believe it's happening, just make the motion of lifting heavy energy out of your space. Let it go. And here are some affirmations that are coming up that can help you. I own my space. I own my personal space. My soul is in charge of my personal domain. My soul is in charge of my personal domain. Now, when some people hear that they are in charge, they get upset with this. The reason for that is that they've been told that divine source or God is in charge. Yes, true, but consider 
that you are made of the substance of the divine. Your body, your soul is made of divine substance. So it is true and valid for you to decisively state, I am in charge of my domain. It doesn't mean that you're in charge of anybody else. You can be completely humble and still know that your soul is in charge of your personal private space. Okay. And before we conclude for the evening, I want to see if there are any questions and comments. I just want to say that that time, that caused my something to happen in my knee. What is that about? The right knee, the one that is injured. Just a particular comment about that and a general comment because this is an issue that everybody has. Some issues are surfacing in a number of people that say, wait a minute, you are not allowed to be in your body. You are not allowed to take your power back. It's almost as if there's an argument where one part of you steps in and says, I am allowed to be in my power. I am allowed to be in my body. These other parts are saying, no, we have 110 reasons why that's not so. You will have to work with all the layers, bring your consciousness in, get everything connected. You remembered a technique that showed up a couple times for other people who had questions. It's relevant here. Get each part of the body connected with all the other parts. And the reason that's so important and so healing is that what's often missing in one part of the body is the perspective of another part of the body. So you mentioned the knees. Well, the knees are connected to the shins and the thighs. And so get them connected, get them communicating so that they can work together. Now, what they all have in common is that they're all part of this body It's as if they're all working on the same team for the same project. And what they also have in common is that they are expressions of the same one soul. So convince all the parts of your body that they are all working on the same team and that they can go to the soul. All the parts of the body, if they want to go to the person who's the head of the company, so to speak, that would be the soul. I guess we are ready to complete for the evening. And so here is our concluding meditation. Okay. Now, tune in to the skeleton. Tune into your skeleton. Good. And notice how the skeleton has a deep quality to it. Tune into the muscles and nerves. Muscles and nerves. Slightly quicker energy. And notice that you can integrate in your consciousness the nerves and the muscles and the bones. You can integrate the nerves and the muscles and the bones. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm. That's good. Now, notice what happens when you simultaneously experience the bones and the muscles and the nerves all inside the skin and, of course, the circulatory system is flowing blood And so you look from one body system to the other. You look from one body system to the other to the other. And you realize they all have their characteristic energy. And now you have become more familiar with them. You have been introduced to them and they have been introduced to you. And so now they are your friends. They are your teammates. You can work with them. Find out what happens right now for this concluding meditation where you bring the energy of your spirit and you let that spiritual presence flow simultaneously into every body system, okay? Flowing simultaneously into every body system. And that is really nice. It's bringing up a lot of stagnant energy. So just lift that stagnant stuff right out of the room and let it dissolve Mm -hmm. and congratulate yourself for boldly going where you had not gone before, going into those deeper levels of self. Ah, and one information is coming up. I see because this seems as if it's a deep exploration, which it is, but it can also be enjoyable and it can also be relaxing. So 
I want to encourage everybody, affirm right now, bringing my soul into my body is relaxing. It's safe. Bringing my soul into my body is relaxing and safe. Splendid. That was great. Everybody looked strong and bright. You did really well. And you've got the equipment now. You've got the techniques. Keep on exploring and keep on creating integration between all the body systems and your soul. And you will find that you are like the universe. You are a universe of possibilities. Yes, please. Hello. Can we use this technique over the long distance for someone else? Can we use this over long distance? Well, I put it to you that that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> we no, I mean working. for someone for someone else. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And this is an important question because it brings up basic questions about the nature of reality. But basically, when you are assisting somebody, assisting somebody is like assisting yourself. In other words, you are tuning into you when you're doing a self-healing. So that's one part of you working with another part. But when you're working with somebody who, let us say, is sitting across from you in the same room, there's a bit of a distance. But what if they were in the next room? Is that significantly different? Not really. What if they're on the phone 2,000 miles away? Well, it's the same room. So it's just something to play with. Start exploring how time and space are whatever you choose for them to be. How about for someone in the hospital? I mean, provided that I ask for the permission from his spirit. Again, each of these questions is asking, is there a different set of rules when there is a physical distance? No. It's the same room. It's always the same room. It doesn't matter if it's called a hospital or a zoo. My question is not... For that person's not being awake. Ah, this is an issue that has to do with permission. Permission right. issues, whenever possible, of course, you do it on the physical plane, but if the person is not capable of giving a response, you always talk to their inner self or higher self, if you like, and you ask them, how much of this are you willing to receive? And sometimes they will say a lot. Sometimes they will say just a little bit, but don't push it. And sometimes they will say, nope, I've had it with this earth plane. Don't try and make me well. So it's just something that you need to ask. And in your heart of hearts, you will feel the answer. What we're going to do now is open up the mutes. And that way we can all give each other our goodbyes for the evening and blessings. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, thank you.